community, Vanessa Roche. I'm going to be doing the Dumbing Us Down uh, book review and my four lessons that I have learned. Okay, so we start off with John Gatto and his philosophies on what it means to be a teacher in this day and age and um, the lessons that he feels like he teaches um, children every day that aren't necessarily lessons of um, education, but lessons of life. And um, some of the ones that I was given was that he started off with uh, number four being emotional dependency. And I think this derives from our need to really feel like we are making a contribution, that our um, opinions matter, and that we are not validated unless somebody tells us that we are. And he feels like by teaching uh, emotional dependency ties that validation to their need for success. And um, I totally agree with this. And I think that a lot of people don't really understand that um, children look to teachers not only as their mentors or their teachers or their educators, but they look at to somebody that um, they need approval from. This is the same that they look for from their parents. And so when you're with that child, they really feel like your opinion of them matters. And um, having that dependency in the classroom gives you so much power. And like he said in the book that um, we, if we had leaders that had self-esteem and knew their self-worth and we moved on into the world that everybody had this validation that nothing could stop us. And I truly believe that. Um, a next one that he went over was our intellectual dependency. Sometimes children feel like they are the bad kid because they don't understand right away. And there are students that are gonna be in our care that are going to learn at different rates. We need to be able to mold those abilities into um, their educational plans as a whole group. Um, student success are built on ability, ability to memorize text. Um, so for them, learning text isn't so much going to move them forward as an individual thinker. We have made no room for individual thinkers in our society. So what does this say to our roles as an educator? That means that we need to push further in um, individual ideals that we want our children to come away with. We want them to feel like they are being heard and that their contributions are not just a test score and that while they can follow in, um, instructions and be sitting quietly while we are taking tests, that doesn't mean that collaboration is off the table. and. Just because you feel like a student is not being heard, um, they shouldn't be punished for speaking out and wanting that attention. Okay, so it goes on to now the sixth one, and that is provisionary self-esteem. So how do you think you did on the test? That is one of the things that we ask our kids all the time. We ask our peers this, we ask fellow um, collaborators this, how do you think you did? How do you think you did? Um, what does that say about um, the culture that we live in, that we only live to be a number and where we are in our academics gives us value in, within our community as a I'm better than or I make the check. I know. Um, the testing culture has built a system of learners that are conditioned to having negative feedback um, for their performance in school or at home or at sports. 
telling the kids that, you know, you didn't do well on this or um, you can't be part of that group because you're not that level. Um, going into when they get into teaching positions at, in their own student groups where this process will follow them, you know, into their employment opportunities and they will see that they strive for that um, good job, pat on the back. Uh, in the future, that necessarily doesn't validate their understanding of the material, more of the memorization and being able to be obedient. And uh, while we do need um, some structure within the school and uh, the class, we don't necessarily need drones. And we need to understand that children while conditioned to sit there, be quiet and raise your hand when you have an opinion, need the freedom to uh, really feel like they're being an individual within a class structure. And the last one he went over was, I see you, you cannot hide, you're under my thumb all the time. As educators, we have this provision of being able to monitor their success while they are at home by giving them homework and assignments that are viewed as their level of understanding away from us. It's a way for educators to have a sense of control of their home life and be able to make them accountable for continuing education in their free time. We leave children with no space to be um, kids anymore. And we really need that time to really hone in on making them understand that in class, that that is the place for them to show, I guess, their um, ideals and their thought process and be able to um, be accountable for their assignments. I think we spend way too much time with students um, having homework that takes away from their time as a child, as a, you know, friend, as a playmate, as a player on the team. And those social structures are just as important, if not more important, for a child's psyche of having that rest of that, you know, they can be able to learn how to do something without being told and having it their own way and still getting the same product is just as easy as following instructions. So what does that leave us with? Um, do I agree completely with him? No. I do think that while these ideas are initiated in school systems that um, progressive teachers have really moved away from the structure of playing school, even though we have a common core and ideas that we need to maintain, not necessarily are we sitting in rows and being quiet and um, not having the ability to have small discussion groups and collaboration groups. I think the schools are really moving to small learning communities, much like this classroom, and having that um, collaboration of minds and ideas more than structure, which I think is really beneficiary to not only the educators to be able to watch them grow in their individualism, but watch them also grow and their knowledge of the subject and see that passion ignite from probably something that wasn't their favorite. And so um, American educators and an institution of which no one escapes is what uh, Gatto said. And I think that's true. We carry what our teachers um, embed into us, into our professional careers, what we want to be when we grow up is um, along the lines of what we were told we were capable of doing. And um, so the school is a place for learning of obedience or faced with punishment. 
This goes straight into also the professional field as well. If you can't follow the expectations of you that you are docked hours, you are docked uh, label, you are given letters of reprimand, uh, you're asked to take weeks off or even eliminated from the position completely because you are not able to follow instructions. So having some of this embedded into you while not necessarily positive does give you a venue of what you will need it for in the future. Um, lastly, societies are rewarded for conformity. Um, by the better the school, the better the education, the better the college, the better the job, the better the money equals you will be successful. And we have stifled curious minds and programming to tell them that unless they are willing to study eight hours a day and to be the best of their class and pay the most money to go to the best college, and that they will be rewarded in the end with student debt that lasts a lifetime and a job that will give them success. And this is um, tragic to me that we associate book smarts with success and not creativity and entrepreneurship, those things built social media stances. They built uh, computers and they built companies that run our society. And we are told that these minds aren't good enough because they don't necessarily have the better college, the better job. They started at the bottom. They saw potential in something that no one else saw. They took the risk. And I think that's something that we need to do within our classroom, be able to take risk on our kids, see their individual potential and not necessarily pacify them with their way, but open up more ideas of being able to label themselves as successful with not necessarily coloring in the lines their whole life. Um, so I'm going to leave you with this. What does it take to change the epidemic of our school system now as it stands with Common Core? Where do you see that going with our children and their process of being able to move into a position later on in life that gives them self-esteem, self-worth, and of course a good paycheck? Um, and how long do you think that this will take? How, what, how long do you think that this academic is going to last? And what will you do to change it in your classroom? How will you be that person that ignites that fire within your kids that lets them know that their contributions are more than the letter that they circled on their test? And with that, I thank you for your time. And I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to come to you via technology and um, be accountable to my family. So with that, have a blessed day and I'll see you later.